All right, welcome back. Uh, in this uh, example, we will take a look at this circuit and determine the frequency response across this LC network right here. So we have a RLC circuit with L inductor and a capacitor in parallel to each other. And we have an input voltage which will, uh, where we'll uh, vary the frequency of the input voltage and look at what the output voltage looks like. So in this circuit, we're asked, what is the transfer function? And does this circuit behave as a low pass filter, high pass filter, or a band pass filter? Okay, so let's go ahead and start. And the first thing we want to do is, we, since we see the L and the C, uh, the impedance of the inductor is J omega L, and the impedance of this capacitor is 1 over J omega C. And since they're in parallel, let's write down the parallel total impedance of that network. <coughs> So the parallel impedance of that network is J omega L, that's the impedance of the inductor, times the impedance of the capacitor divided by the sum of those two impedances. So that's what we have right here. Now let's simplify this a little uh, bit. And this is what we end up with as J L C. And we can even further simplify this and get to this by because J times J is J squared. J squared uh, is equal to negative 1 omega square LC. So that's how we got here. Now we look at the output voltage. We have this parallel network across which the output voltage is being measured. We have a resistor in series to that parallel network. So by voltage divider, we can say that the V out is equal to the impedance of this LC network divided by the impedance of the LC plus R times V in. So by voltage divider, that's what we get. So V out over V in, just rewriting this, we V out over V in equals ZLC divided by R plus ZLC. Now this V out over V in is the transfer function. So let's replace ZLC that we calculated before here, the impedance LC, and see what this looks like. So we have replaced the impedance of the parallel network, R plus the impedance of the parallel network. Now simple algebraic manipulation, we see uh, the following R times 1 minus omega square LC on the top plus J omega L divided by 1 minus omega square LC. Now on this particular case we see that this quantity right here and that quantity will cancel and what we'll be left with is J omega L divided by R minus omega square LC plus J omega L. Not as elegant as the simple transfer function we had seen for a simple RC low or high pass filter in the prior videos, but this is a uh, the transfer function for this particular circuit. So let's start with that now. So we found the transfer function, so that's a transfer function right here, and we were asked if this circuit behaves as a low pass, high pass, or a band pass filter. In order to do that, we need to look at the magnitude response of this transfer function. In other words, what's the magnitude of this transfer function? The top part is an imaginary number, doesn't have a real part, so the magnitude of this is simply omega L. Now the bottom part, it has a real term right here and an imaginary term right here, so the magnitude of the bottom part is the square root of the real term whole square plus the omega L whole square. So that's what we end up with as the magnitude. Now in order to find the magnitude response as we had done for the low pass and the high pass filter exercises before this, we will replace omega equals zero infinity and see what happens. Okay, so let's start out with omega equals zero. So on this particular magnitude of the response, if we put down omega equals zero, what happens? So if omega is equal to zero, then replacing zero everywhere. So the top part is zero times L and we have replaced omega at zero here and here. So that's how we got zeros here and here. Now the bottom part, we don't even need to consider it anymore because the top part is already a zero. So this basically means that the whole function is zero divided by some quantity and that basically is equal to a zero. So as omega is equal to zero, then the magnitude of the transfer function says that the magnitude response is equal to zero. Now what happens when omega equals in, uh, gets closer to infinity? Now in this case, you could choose a really large number, uh, maybe 10 to the power nine or 10 to the power 10 and see what happens with a real large number. Uh, if you feel comfortable working with uh, infi infinity, that's fine too. In this, in our case, I'm actually going to just replace infinity and see what happens. So I've replaced infinity wherever omega was. Okay, now, uh, so infinity times L is still a large number, so we'll leave that as that. Here's infinity square, 
1 minus infinity square is basically infinity square, negative infinity square. Square of that is infinity to the power of 4. Okay? Uh, infinity square doesn't matter what L is, it's a really large number, so that's a really large number. Now if, if we add these two guys, this is really large number to the power of 4 and really large number to the power of 2, really these this really approximates to really large number to the power of 4, so that's what we have here. Next, really large number to the power of 4, square root of that really is really large number to the power of 2, so infinity over infinity squared, so bear with me and this will become 1 over infinity. So we have 1 divided by a really, really large number and that gets us to 0. Now, if you don't feel comfortable just playing around with infinity, feel free to put in, like I said, a big number like 10 to the power 9 and see what happens. Or 10 to the power 10, 10 to the power 12. Choose a really large number uh, for a high frequency uh, signal. Okay? So we saw that both with omega equals 0 and omega equals infinity, now we have a response that's equal to 0. Okay? Now, in this case, let's put down omega equals 1 over square root LC and see what happens. So if I put in omega x equals 1 over LC, so I've replaced that right there, square root of n1, uh, omega equals 1 over square root of LC, so that's what I replaced here. Omega squared is 1 over LC, omega is 1 over square root of LC. Now, manipulating this, I end up with square root of LC on the top and square root of LC on the bottom. Okay, uh, And that is equal to 1. Now, this tells us that at low frequencies, the magnitude response is equal to zero. At some point, the magnitude response becomes equal to one, and then again, at high frequencies, it becomes equal to zero. So if I was plotting the magnitude response of the transfer function, this is what I would see. So lower frequencies, that's zero by the way, so lower frequencies are being not passed, so cut off. Higher frequencies are not being cut, uh, passed but cut off because response is equal to zero. So V out is equal essentially zero in these two cases. Whereas here, there's a band of frequencies in the middle where the frequencies are being passed through because V out equals V in during this case. Okay? Uh, so in this case, uh, well, uh, this kind of thing is so there's a band of frequencies that pass, so this is called a band pass filter. So this particular circuit doesn't allow higher low frequencies to pass, but omega equals square root LC passes perfectly, right? So this kind of circuit, this circuit right here that we just saw, has a band pass response. So this is called a band pass filter. Okay, what are some of the uses of a band pass filter? Well, if you think about radio signals, uh, FM. Uh, when you tune to a particular frequency, you get a station associated with that frequency. That means every other channels are not being allowed. Only that frequency that you want to listen to is being allowed. So that's one example of a bandpass filter.